Good afternoon. Welcome to the Midday Mole for Wednesday, the 6th of September. Following Robert Murray McShane's reading scheme, today we reach the end of the first book of Samuel, which describes the battle between the Israelites and the Philistines, with the Philistines winning quite resoundingly. It begins, Now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell slain on Mount Gilboa. And Saul was amongst those. Uh, we're told that he was wounded by the archers, and he then asked his armor bearer to kill him because the Philistines were closing in. He didn't want to fall into their hands and suffer abuse at their hands. Armor bearer wouldn't do it, so he falls on his own sword, kills himself, takes his own life. The armor bearer sees that he also falls on his sword and takes his life. Um, and we have this sort of sad note uh, there. So Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men died together that same day. And as I read that, I thought that, that that's quite a, a, a difference to the previous chapter where David went out to battle the Amalekites and won and reclaimed all the, the captives they'd taken, got all the plunder back. Um, and as he brought it all back, he shared the plunder with the people that hadn't been into battle, his men that were too tired to go. And so it set up a, a, a precedent which they carried through going forward. And so you have this almost quite very positive perspective of David and his victory and this complete disaster for Saul. And as I thought about it, I thought one of the, the, the differences one notes is that as David was about to go and pursue the Amalekites, he, he stopped and he called on God. He called on Abiathar and said, is this the right thing to do? What does God say? And he followed God's, God's leading. Saul didn't do that. As we've read through, we're aware that Saul tried to find get a, an answer from God, but God wasn't speaking to him. God didn't give him an answer. So he turned to a witch um, to summon uh, Samuel from the dead. And I thought the difference was that David was walking with God day by day. And as you've read through the, the book, you, you're aware that David constantly says, oh, far be it from me to do that. The Lord wouldn't. And, and he's the Lord's anointed. And not perfectly, but, but you have a sense of his walking with God, listening to God, trying as best he can to live like God wants him to do, and that God was part of his life. God was part of everything that David did. Saul, on the other hand, ignored God, turned away from God, did his own thing, um, uh, ignored what God said, did exactly the opposite at, at, on occasions. And then when things were difficult, he suddenly, oh, now I'll call on God. And that's a, a profound difference. And, and we need to, as Christians, we need to live like David did, constantly listening to God, seeking God, reading his word, saying, God, guide us. And even when things are not going badly, when things are going well, say, God, today, guide me as well. Help me today to live for you. So that when the difficult times come, it'll be part of our natural life. Rather than living like Saul, where you ignore God, and then in the difficult moments, desperately call upon God and expect, expect God to come when I need him. Have God there as my servant, doing what I need when I need it. The rest of the time, pack him away, don't need him. Um, and that's not how we should live. So be, be challenged to walk with God daily, knowing that um, David is an exemplar of what that kind of life looks like, as opposed to Saul. Be encouraged and know that we are blessed.